Now let me discuss the concentration of right concentration of adrenaline for different routes and indications. For different routes and indications. Now this adrenaline, remember, it is used at different concentration in different routes for different indications. Now, for example, you take in patients for bronchial asthma. In case of bronchial asthma, remember the route of administration of this adrenaline is via the inhalational route right it is via the inhalational route now the concentration at which you have to give the adrenaline right that is at a concentration of 1 is to 100 in case of bronchial asthma you take in case of anaphylactic shock in case of anaphylactic shock remember this particular adrenaline it is given via various routes. What are the routes where this adrenaline can be given in patients with anaphylactic shock is? It can be given intravenous, but this is very rare. Right? The preferable route is intramuscular. Right? This is preferred route. And it can also be given subcutaneously. Right? It can also be given subcutaneously. Now, when you are giving this by intravenous route, intravenous route, the dilution should be 1 is to 10,000. And intramuscular and as well as the subcutaneous, the concentration is around 1 is to 1,000. Right? The concentration is around 1 is to 1,000. Next, you take in case of the cardiac arrest. In cardiac arrest, you have to give via the intravenous route right in patients with cardiac arrest you have to give this via intravenous route in intravenous route the concentration is around 1 is to 1000 right the concentration is around 1 is to 1000 next you are giving adrenaline along with local anesthetic in order to increase the duration of action of the local anesthetic now with local anesthetic right with local anesthetic right what is the route of administration you are giving that is subcutaneous because local anesthetics we give either subcutaneously or intradermally so whenever you are giving along with local anesthetics you are giving this subcutaneously and the concentration of adrenaline here is around 1 is to 2 lakhs so it is very low concentration along with local anesthetics so remember this adrenaline it is given the concentration of the adrenaline is different for different routes and as well as indications. So you take for bronchial asthma that is via inhalational route the concentration is around 1 is to 100. You take anaphylactic shock it can be given intramuscular subcutaneous or intravenous intramuscular route is preferred the concentration should be around 1 is to 1000 subcutaneous route 1 is to 1000 intravenous route very rarely used 1 is to 10,000 concentration. In cardiac arrest, the route of administration is intravenous. The dilution is around 1 is to 1000. And with local anesthetics, right, it has to be given subcutaneously at a concentration of 1 is to 2 lakhs. So, let me continue about the actions of the other sympathomimetic drugs, right. So, you take this catecholamines, like the other catecholamines, what we have discussed is the dopamine. Dopamine is a very important drug and it is the drug of choice for cardiogenic shock right it is a drug of choice for cardiogenic shock with oliguric renal failure all right so remember drug of choice for cardiogenic shock all right so it is the dopamine so drug of choice for cardiogenic shock with oliguric renal failure Now, another important point what you should remember here is the actions of dopamine is on different receptors 
at different concentrations now for example you take this dopamine right dopamine it can act on d1 receptors it can act on the beta 1 receptors and it can also act on the alpha 1 receptors now first you take the action of the dopamine it will act on d1 receptors at a dosage of around 1 to 2 micrograms per kg per minute so at a dosage of 1 to 2 micrograms per kg per minute it acts on d1 receptors next at a dosage of 2 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute it acts on the beta 1 receptors next you take on the alpha 1 receptors at a dosage of more than 10 micrograms per kg per minute it acts on the alpha 1 receptors all right so whenever it is acting on d1 receptors it causes renal vasodilatation so by acting on d1 receptors it will cause renal vasodilatation so remember this point it will cause renal vasodilatation by acting on d1 receptors so whenever there is renal vasodilatation what will happen thereby it will maintain right thereby it will maintain renal perfusion and gfr okay thereby it will maintain renal perfusion and as well as the gfr okay next you take the other inotropic agents like other inotropic agents like noradrenaline if you take noradrenaline it is the action on the renal blood vessels is quite contrary what is your dopamine doing by acting on d1 blood vessels there is renal vasodilatation and renal perfusion whereas you take the noradrenaline noradrenaline it will cause vasoconstriction and it will further worsen the renal failure okay so noradrenaline it will cause renal vasoconstriction and thereby it will further worsen the renal failure right thereby it will further worsen the renal failure next we have one more important drug that is called as ibopamine ibopamine has similar properties as dopamine okay so a point what you should remember is ibopamine so ibopamine is the drug which has similar properties to the dopamine right which has the similar properties to the dopamine next we have another very important sympathomimetic drug which is a catecholamine that includes dobutamine but remember this dobutamine is a synthetic catecholamine right it is not endogenous catecholamine it is exogenous catecholamine so dobutamine it selectively it acts on beta 1 receptors so it is a beta 1 agonist right dobutamine has no action on the dopamine receptors it selectively acts on beta 1 receptors right so there is no action on dopamine receptors right that is a very very important point so whenever you are using dobutamine what it will do it will increase the cardiac output of the individual right it will increase the cardiac output of the individual so remember this point how by acting on beta 1 receptors it will increase the cardiac contractility and thereby the cardiac output of the individual increases but on the heart rate it has less action with little action on the heart rate right with little action on the heart rate of the individual okay so that is about your dobutamine next we have another important drug which is called dopexamine 
Now, if you take this dopexamine, dopexamine, remember, dopexamine combines beta 2 and D1 agonistic activity with noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor action. So, what is your dopexamine doing? Dopexamine, it combines beta 2 and D1 agonistic activity. Right? How is this doing? So, what it will do is, this particular dopexamine will cause noradrenaline reuptake inhibitory action thereby what it is doing to the noradrenaline levels it is increasing the noradrenaline levels at the synaptic junction right so with noradrenaline reuptake inhibitory action okay so that is what is your dopexamine doing next we have another very important drug which is called as the phenaldopam so, if you take this phenyl dopam, let me tell you a few points about the phenyl dopam. Phenyl dopam is a D1 agonist. It is useful in hypertensive emergencies because whenever the D1 receptors are activated, there will be renal vasodilatation and there will be increase in renal perfusion and increase in the GFR of the individual. So, phenyl dopam is a D1 agonist. And where do we use this phenyl dopam is, this phenyl dopam, it is useful in hypertensive emergencies. Right, useful in the hypertensive emergencies. Alright, so this is, these are some few points about the catecholamines, that is your sympathomimetic drugs. So, if you take dopamine, dopamine is a drug of choice for cardiogenic shock with oliguric renal failure and this dopamine at different concentrations it acts on various receptors at a concentration of 1 to 2 micrograms per kg per minute it acts on D1 receptors thereby there is renal vasodilatation increases the renal perfusion and GFR you take the action on beta 1 receptors it occurs at 2 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute and more than 10 micrograms per kg per minute it acts on alpha 1 receptors and there will be, thereby there will be vasoconstriction you take dobutamine which is an exogenous catecholamine it selectively acts on beta 1 receptors there is no action on the dopamine receptors at all so by acting selectively on beta 1 receptors there is increase in the cardiac output of the individual with little action on the heart rate next you take this dopexamine dopexamine it combines the beta 2 and as well as d1 agonistic activity and this particular dopexamine it has noradrenaline reuptake inhibitory action Next, we have the phenyl dopam. Phenyl dopam, it has D1 agonistic activity. It is used in case of hypertensive emergencies.